Ladies and gentlemen, this is a, a wonderful evening to salute and honor someone that has truly lived the American dream. Truett Cathy has embodied the virtues of free enterprise, limited government, and personal responsibility while making the Lord the center of his life. I commend the Georgia Public Policy Foundation for your selection for this Georgia Freedom Award for this year. It's a truly outstanding uh, selection. Uh, Truett has been a longtime personal friend of mine and one that I know from having observed him for many years that certainly he's very deserve, uh, deserving of this honor. Just look around the room and all the friends of his that are here this evening and certainly it will attest to the fact that he is a worthy candidate for this honor tonight. Yogi Berra, who his humorous contradictions are used many times, you might have read in the paper where he received an honorary doctorate degree last week, and in his remarks, I think he probably said it best last week, before he used some of his humorous contradictions, you know, we go back to it's not over till it's over, that was his, and uh, in the years ahead, when you come to the fork in the road, take it. And one of his other good ones, stay alert. You can observe a lot by watching. <laughs> but he said it best when he ended his remarks by saying, thank you for making this day necessary. <clears throat> I want to thank Truett Cathy, and I'm sure you join with me. Thank him for making this night necessary. However, I know that Truett would probably be the first to admit that he is here because of a team effort. My, what a team. A great team. Many of you know members of that team. Of course, his number one member of the team is here with him this evening, Jeanette. He met her when he was eight years old. It took him 15 more years to get her in a position so she could catch him. <laughs> but she did, and she has held on all these years. Then the other members of the team that is very important Chick-fil-A today are members of his family, too. And you know, they, they came in, in, in kind of a rush. Uh, Dan in 1953, Bubba in 1954, and then Trude in 1955, three in three years. Just imagine that mothers, uh, a real responsibility, but uh, it's like everything else that Truett does. He does it in a hurry, and he gets the job done. <laughs> and then with this family, the beautiful grandchildren that uh, he has accumulated that has become a part of the family, and then extended family members, people that Jeanette and Truett came, uh, took into their home and uh, made them a part of their family extending on over into these foster children, some being introduced uh, here this evening. And of course, the corporate family, the Chick-fil-A people uh, almost around the world that are part of his extended family, big family, a big responsibility, but uh, Truett Cathy can fill those shoes. What an outstanding leader and moral example this man has been. Many of you probably have your personal copy of his book, It's Easier to Succeed Than Fail. If you don't have your personal copy, you ought to get one. It's good reading. I'll always remember uh, the draft copy that he shared with me prior to its publication while I was still governor. And he asked for my comments. Well, I enjoyed uh, reading this impressive and very inspirational autobiography. I was captured by the direction that he had in his life very early. Many of us search a lifetime trying to grasp and trying to find a direction or a goal or something that uh, we would like to achieve, but he discovered uh, his direction in life uh, by the time he was 12 years old. He discovered his own three M's. If you read the book, you'll find this. He talks about it. His three M's was number one, mission, mate, and master. And it remained very important, and is even, even today still very important. Number one, the mission 
was born in it at an age of eight when he went into the business of serving Cokes. It's kind of ironic, uh, this year is the 50th anniversary of his food service uh, establishments, and uh, they've made a commemorative Coke bottle with his photo on it 67 years later from him serving his first Cokes at eight years of age. Certainly, I think it's an excellent tribute to him and one very deserving also. Number two on those three M's, mate. Of course, I mentioned that uh, Jeanette is his worthy mate, and maybe we should be honoring her tonight instead of Truett. Uh, she deserves it, putting up with him for 48 years. That's great. <laughs> Jeanette was his first wife and his only wife, and still is his wife, which is unusual in today's uh, world that someone would stay together for that long, but she's been a very vital, important partner in everything that he's done, and probably the real power behind the throne, if you know the truth of it, if you want to ask uh, Dan or Bubba, they'll probably tell you the truth that uh, she's responsible for Truett being here tonight. Then his third M, Master. This was probably the most impressive to me because when he chose his master, he didn't choose this for just a lifetime. He chose this for an eternity, forever. He received Jesus Christ as his personal savior when he was only 12 years of age. I can relate to this because a few years prior to that, uh, at 10 years of age, I accepted Jesus Christ as my personal savior and it's still the greatest thing that has ever happened to Joe Frank Harris. Truett's life has been guided by prayer, uh, biblical principles, and extremely high moral values. I know you will agree, agree with me tonight that values are probably more in question today than I can ever remember in my lifetime. Current events are filled with accounts of improprieties and uh, the lack of ethical behavior in every area of our culture. Accounts range from Watergate, Whitewater, to evangelists, to uh, immorality and drugs and to insider trading schemes on Wall Street uh, to unfounded and untrue allegations in political campaigns and many, many more that I won't take time to mention tonight, but you're exposed to them, you're familiar with them. We're living in a time when ought-to-be role models are no-shows. They're just not there. Our individual values are revealed as we live our daily lives and most of you, I'm sure, are just like I am. You'd probably rather see a sermon than to hear a sermon any day. You watch people, you watch their actions and reactions, and you watch the type of lives that uh, certainly has lived before us. The need has never been greater for wisdom and knowledge from, of right and wrong today in our society, in our business lives, in our professional lives, in our political lives, our home lives, and yes, in our personal private lives that no one knows anything about except you. Don't count on it. If you ever qualify for a political office, everybody will know about it. <laughs> our needs cannot be met without a clear basis from which we each can make our value judgments. Everyone operates from some type of value system that you created or inherited uh, earlier during your lifetimes. Each day we're faced with many decisions, we're faced with many judgment calls. We desperately need, we desperately need many more Truett Cathy's as examples. People that young folks and young people can look up to and know that you can succeed and that the Lord will bless your efforts when you honor your commitment to him and do what is right and live by the Ten Commandments. Truett Cathy has advocated to his team members and others for many years to associate yourselves only with those people you can be proud of, whether they work for you or whether you work for them. This is good advice, and it's good advice that uh, you can carry home with you this evening. I will always remember the occasions that I've had to visit the corporate headquarters and, and uh, meet with Truett Cathy and uh, Dan and also Bubba and the other people that uh, we've been exposed to there. 
I've been there many times over the last recent years, actually, working with Truett on the Quest Atlanta 96 and also working with him in the Billy Graham Crusade and the initial invitation and bringing that uh, crusade to Atlanta. And he was tremendously important for that and very vitally important uh, uh, all along the way for the Billy Graham Crusade. But I, I'll always remember the positive impressions every time that I go to the corporate office and especially the first time when I visited there, the inscription that greets you there at the entrance of the office. It says, our corporate purpose is this, to glorify God by being a faithful steward of all that is entrusted to us and to have a positive influence on all that come in contact with Chick-fil-A. I believe we would all agree this evening that Truett Cathy and Chick-fil-A have truly been positive uh, and a positive influence on not only our state, our nation, and certainly without any reservations, they've exceeded this corporate purpose. We're living in a time when too many Americans have started looking to government for all the answers to society's problems. Government oftentimes has a legitimate role to play in addressing our problems. However, government is ill-equipped to succeed many times. For example, instead of lobbying for better foster care for children in need, Truett Cathy started his own foster care home. And by doing so, he can assure that these innocent children receive the love, the support, and the care that they need. And not look to a large bureaucracy or our government to solve their problems. As a nation, we need to encourage such old-fashioned commitments and involvements in serving others not waiting for passively for the government to, to intervene in the problems that we're having. Education is another of his priorities and one that he didn't wait for the bureaucracy to solve. For many years, Chick -fil -A, the Chick-fil-A team has uh, sponsored the Chick-fil-A team membership program. Uh, and it's been an inspiration for many young people that are employees because uh, they've earned scholarships. Last year, a sculpture was dedicated in downtown Atlanta, 23 feet high. It was given to the city of Atlanta to honor the over 10,000, 10,000 scholarships, and many more have been added even since that day, to young aspiring students. Uh, they participated in over $10 million worth of scholarships during that period of time, and today that's already uh, approaching another million dollars since then. The theme of this sculpture was, there is no goal too high to climb if we climb with care and confidence. What a beautiful legacy. And it's a sculpture that's located uh, nearby Georgia State University, if you have a chance downtown, uh, worth driving by and looking, looking at. For several years, uh, I've served, as was uh, noted in the introduction a moment ago, uh, in the Graduate School of Georgia State University. It's been a new experience for now. Uh, for me, the, I've never been involved in academia before, but two years ago, I was honored with the Distinguished Executive Fellowship. Sounds great, uh, it's a good title. <laughs> but uh, Chick-fil-A was um, uh, very important, played a very important part in this program, as he has in other colleges across the state, and uh, certainly, I'm very, very grateful to Truett Cathy for this. In many cases, though, I've used Truett Cathy as an example in the classes that I've, I've held uh, for number one, being what you are, uh, the example to students for him being what he, what he is, and certainly you can be what you are. Number two, standing for what you believe in. Number three, not sacrificing your principles just because everyone else is doing it. Truett Cathy has always honored the fourth commandment. And this is something else that's very impressive to me because I know the pressure, I know the competition, and I know what you're exposed to in the business community today. But he has always been determined to keep the Sabbath day holy. And as we all know, he does not operate the uh, restaurants and the Chick-fil-A businesses uh, on Sunday. Uh, this is truly a powerful, powerful, positive statement. Don't ever think it doesn't make a impression when a parent explains to uh, their children or a child why they can't eat at their favorite restaurant on Sunday. Where else in today's free enterprise system can we find this kind of an example? 
Certainly I admire Truett Cathy for honoring this commitment uh, over all of these many years. This is a principle that's certainly a personal conviction, and the Lord has blessed him and his family for that. Last Thursday, I had the opportunity, just as probably many of you, to attend the grand opening of the new Truett's Grill, a new concept down in Morrow. I believe I remember that this is the restaurant number 670. 670. Imagine the responsibility. Dr. Charles Carter, who gave the invocation here this evening, shared during that inspirational, uh, shared during the, the ceremonies, an inspirational message, and really he preached a mini sermon. And if you listen to what he said, uh, uh, it had a lot of content, context, and there's a lot of meat in the matter of what he discussed there. But he discussed Truett's favorite scripture. Then on Sunday, the special article in the business section of the Atlanta Journal-Constitution started with a scripture verse. I mean, this is very unusual. How many times have you picked up the newspaper to read an article that started with a scripture verse? <clears throat> this shows the influence and the power of someone that has lived their life uh, according to the principles and has done what he felt like was right. That verse of scripture was Proverbs 22 and verse 1. A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches, and loving favor rather than silver and gold. True it, we're all here because of your good name. And we're here to extend our loving favor to you this evening. You've truly earned this night. We love and certainly respect you. Thank you for being a godly man. And thank you for being our friend. God bless you. And now I'd like to introduce Mr. Hank McCamish. He is, of course, founder and chairman of the McCamish Group and its affiliated company, McCamish Systems. He's also chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Georgia Public Policy Foundation. It was Mr. McCamish who first conceived of the need for the foundation, and it was he who took the initiative to bring together other interested Georgians to make it happen. Mr. Camish is, McCamish is also a very successful businessman, serving as the chairman of the board of the Leading the Way International, the Children's Educational Foundation, which provides scholarship to disadvantaged children in Atlanta who want to attend private or parochial schools, and of JBG International, a securities broker. He is also very active with the Church of the Apostles. I'd like to take this opportunity to introduce you to Hank McCamish, who will present the 1996 Freedom Award. This is a very special evening for me. It's a tremendous honor to represent the members of the Georgia Public Policy Foundation in presenting our 1996 Freedom Award to a great American, a great Georgian, but more significantly, a truly magnificent human being. We were blessed in years past, as you have heard, to honor Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas, Bill Flowers, who's retired chairman of the Board of, of Flowers Industries, and here tonight with us, former Attorney General Griffin Bell. And this year, we honor an individual who is the epitome of a Southern gentleman, an individual who has devoted his life to helping others especially children. His life, both business and personal, is totally devoted to Christian principles. His loyalty to his employees is legendary. He has provided college scholarships for many, many young people who otherwise would not have had the chance that they have had it not been for his generosity. He operates nine group foster care homes. He sponsored summer camps for kids. 
And I have no doubt that what he has done does not compare to what we do not know that he has done. There's no question in my mind that what the unknown is much greater than the known. And one fact of particular interest to me, Mr. Cathy, is that you have never opened your restaurants on Sunday. And And that will be true even during the Olympics. What a testimony to a man of great faith. If you have not already read his biography in your program, I encourage you to do so. I have no doubt you will find it interesting and extremely heartwarming. He is a truly remarkable man. The purpose of the Georgia Freedom Award is to honor an individual whose life embodies the commitment, as you've heard, to personal responsibility, free enterprise, limited government, and truly basic family values. But tonight, I feel that the members of the Georgia Public Policy Foundation are the ones who are being truly honored by being able to present our 1996 Freedom Award to S. Stuart Cathy, founder and chairman of Chick-fil-A. Mr. Cathy is with a great deal of honor and deep respect that on behalf of all members of the Georgia Public Policy Foundation, I present to you our 1996 Freedom Award. You truly do us honor by accepting it. Would you come forward, please? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What a wonderful evening. And I see you folks have talking to the right people. I'm glad you didn't get a hold of any of my enemies and uh, get them an evaluation of who Truett Cathy is. And you picture me as being a perfect individual, but let me say uh, first that I'm not a perfect individual. I'm just striving to be one. But you have certainly indeed honored me tonight in this presentation for your remarks there, Joe Frank, about me. <clears throat> we have been good friends for a good long time, and the reason he's making so much any trips out there at the office was that his future daughter-in-law was working for us. And so he had it. Uh, had every reason to come out and visit with us and see that beautiful young lady named Brooke that uh, now has uh, produced a uh, granddaughter for him. And we just uh, rejoice, Joe Frank, to be and proclaim you as my uh, friend. And Griffin Bell, to think that you were standing up here a year ago and I'm following in, in your footsteps with all your achievements and recognitions that I would be put in the same category to some degree to many of the things that you have accomplished during your lifetime. What a wonderful thing it is to be with such a great group of people. Many of you have come to me and told me that they've been eating with me through the years. And uh, you have honored me. I was telling someone earlier this evening that to build a business, you have to have a foundation of customers who are fully committed to you customer loyalty, I call it. And when you've got just a few customer loyalty, that they're your cheerleaders and they're out waving your flag and promoting your business and that's all it takes because uh, good news spreads, also bad news spread. And 
I do teach 13-year-old boys in Sunday school. I've done that for 40 years. It's been a real joy of mine to see lives change because of possibly my uh, effect on their lives. But one of the most tragic things I think it is that uh, the many, even our Christian homes, are coming from divided homes. A third of my boys, I have 45, I believe, on my roll, and year after year I can identify that a third of them have severe problems in their home. The home's divided, or they have problems with the older brother or older sister, and uh, we'll see in our lifestyle change. And I think we, we see the evidence of what we need to do to change this back, that America has been great because of the quality and the stability of our home life. And we've seen that America was great because of the faith in the Lord. 200 years ago, 90% of the curriculum in our schools were built on develop, developing character on the individual. And the Bible was the major textbook. But what is it today? I said it was a few weeks ago that I had a group of youngsters sitting there on carpet and I was sharing with them and I was asking them, what do you want to be when you grow up? And, uh, and they was telling me they want to be a policeman, a fireman, a teacher, a doctor. And then one little boy said, he wanted to be a zookeeper. Well, from that, all the rest of them want to be a zookeeper. <laughs> zookeeper, zookeeper, zookeeper. And then uh, when they left, I said, I want to give you a, a couple of books but in your library. And I'm going to sign my name, and I'm going to put Proverbs 22.1 down there. I'm not going to tell you what it is. I want you to look it up in the Bible when, in your library. And I said, you do have a Bible in your library, don't you? And the teacher spoke up, said, Mr. Kathy, I'm sorry, but we don't have a Bible in our library. I say it, it is when we were built on the foundation of the Bible and faith in, in the Lord. And I'm one that we honor our Lord when we're successful, not in our failures, that we're born with a gift that all of us want to be somebody, and we want to achieve something that might be noteworthy. I wish I had a full evening with you that I could tell you 88 different stories about my foster children, who's been an inspiration to me. This picture you saw here, Woody sitting, sitting here, and uh, he came in my class when he was 13, and he was, uh, his mother and dad were divorced when he was four. He was living with his mom in Lake City, Florida. And he, the state patrol had to find him out on a scout trip to tell him that his mother had just been instantly killed. And a neighbor brought him to my Sunday school class and because of the circumstances, I gave Woody a lot of my, my time, especially on, on the weekends. But the thing that struck me was that he came to me one day and said, Mr. Kathy, when I grow up, I want to come to work for Chick-fil-A. He says, I don't think I want to work, operate one of those Chick-fil-A units, but I'd like to have a desk and a secretary like you have. <laughs> that caught my attention. But the wonders of it all is that he went on and went through University of Georgia and finished with high honors. He was number one marketing student for his marketing fraternity for the nation. He came to work as, uh, uh, in our marketing department. Uh, he found a beautiful girl he got married that he's with tonight. Uh, and I served as best man at his wedding. Uh, he has a, a one sweet little girl and expecting another one pretty soon now. And he came to me uh, about three years ago now and he wanted to take a leave of absence two years. He wanted to go to Harvard and he wanted to get his MBA there. So I told him, Woody, don't you go up there and get so smart you think you're going to come back and roll me for my job. <laughs> <laughs> that I'm going to be working very hard because I still need a job. But he went up there and finished. I don't know where you finished with high honors or not, Woody, but you got through. And uh, he's back working with their now international uh, expansion. So I have some of the joys of life, you know, that you just can't make, can't buy with dollars and cents. 
when you surround yourself with people that are very excited about what they're doing, and I oftentimes say I'm not in business for myself because I have so many other people that has caused me to be in the position that I am today. I'm indeed honored. I'm honored with this trophy. But I'd like for you to be, to be exposed to my living trophy. Doug and Julie, were you and the children? Come up here just for a minute. I want these folks to see you. Some of the joys that I have in life that you just came by with dollars and cents. This is just some of the children in their household. This is Doug and Julie Bowling. They claim this is the Bowling Bunch. And, uh, and I want to just take a look, look at them. Tommy, come on up here. These individuals right here, I believe I could safely say that they've never even been sent to the principal's office. If any of them <laughs> ever been sent to the principal's office, uh, well, you can see, you wouldn't think they would, and if they did, it was for maybe throwing paper on the floor or something like that, it wasn't for shooting anybody. Uh, <laughs> but one of the experiences I have, when I go up to Berry, I have a home there, and I try to select one or two to come go home and spend the night with me, and maybe those that uh, had been sent to the principal's office, uh, those that are high achievers and they need to receive uh, recognition. The really in establishing a foster home, the secret to it is select the right parents. And Doug and Julie were called by the Lord to be house parents. What is a rewarding thing, is they, <clears throat> we have one of the children that he raised, Richard, he's in college up in uh, Charlotte. He and his he just recently married, and I served his best man at his wedding. And he came by the office, he and his wife, Christmas, to tell me and was sharing with me some of the goals he had set for himself. But he said, eventually, the two of them, they wanted to be like Doug and Julie. They wanted to be house parents. So they are strictly role models for these children. And Jennifer, would I, do you mind me telling a little story about you and Michael? Uh, you wouldn't mind? Okay. <laughs> Michael and Jennifer there, this pretty little freckle-faced, uh, red-headed girl that she calls them angel kisses, right? And uh, they were, had been with us for more than two years, and finally the caseworker said, well, I was thinking it's about time you move somewhere else. Uh, we think you probably a good candidate to be adopted. And that's Jennifer, and this is Michael. And uh, I said, well, before that's happening, I'll be their legal guardian. So I went through the courts, and I was, Jeanette and I were game that we are their legal guardian. And I like to take them out to eat from time to time, and we go by, maybe after going out to eat, go by Walmart, get some, some of the necessities of life. For Michael, it would be baseball cards. Uh, <laughs> you gotta have a few more. And we go home, and we pop popcorn and have hot chocolate and on the last time we had ice cream too and I said what do you want popcorn hot chocolate or ice cream they said we want it all <laughs> so <laughs> and uh, one of the things that we do after having all these goodies uh, we say our prayers together and then uh, I rock them to sleep I just invented that through uh, someone else that shared the effect that the rocking chair will have to rock your children when they're angry and rock them when they're sleepy. And what a joy it is to rock my children when they come up there. And this last time, a time before maybe, I was trying to explain to Michael and Jennifer that I'm there, there now their legal guardian. And I said, anytime you should misbehave, I have the privilege, uh, permitted to, I should say, to spank you. When the wards are defects, you can't spank your children. But after they come in, in your custody, that uh, you can handle them like your own children. So I have not had any reason to, uh, to spank them. But uh, I was trying to explain this to them when uh, what legal guardianship meant. 
and that uh, they wouldn't have to worry about someone taking them away from us, that they'd have this peace and security to know that they would have parents and they would have a home that loved them and uh, they didn't want to be, be moved. And I say, you don't have to worry about that anymore. Jennifer fell asleep. She fell asleep real easy, but Michael here, he was, after rocking him a half an hour and I was about to fall asleep myself, I said, well, <laughs> Michael, you ready to go to bed? And he says, could we rock a little bit longer? <laughs> but the next morning, little Jennifer came to me and said, Grandpa, most of them call me Grandpa. I tell them, you know, those that call me Grandpa gets more than the rest of you. And so, <laughs> so most of them do call me Grandpa. And that's the position I like to play. Jennifer came to me, said, Grandpa, you are now my guardian angel, aren't you? I say, yes, uh, Jennifer. I'm your guardian angel. I promise you I always will be. And every time I see her now, I say, how is it that you and I are related to each other? She said, you're my guardian angel. So I hope that you appreciate that fact, Jennifer. It means a lot to me to be your guardian angel. And you're really my guardian angel because someday I want to grow up and be just like you, with freckled <laughs> face and red head. Oh, <laughs> Thank you. I thank you for that, this recognition and for this gift tonight, and I'll certainly display it proudly. And I hope that I'll be the person that you think I am. Thank you very much.